Hello, Leo. Welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. It's pussycat time, Leo. <laughs> I don't know what I want to say. I feel like I want to break into song when I come into your energy lately. It's pussycat time. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> this is so weird. I don't act as silly in the other ones. So, Leo, let's get serious. This is a general reading, so it may or may not resonate with you. If it does and you're drawn to it, there is an extended. The link to that is at the top of the description within this video. So, for so, I don't know why. I, I feel like someone's saying, I can't find it. So, so, you see this description at the far right, there's a little arrow that there's more. So, you press on that and it drops down and you'll see... <laughs> I feel like I had to say that for someone. So Leo, pussycat time. What do we got? Boy, you guys are just, I can't, I feel like you're just anxious for your readings almost. Huh. Be playful, tend to the small things, co-create with spirit. That's an awful lot to talk about. Let me see what, all the energy is going this way. All of them, look at them. They're all going in the same direction. Being playful, you're, you're looking after, it's like you're preparing for something. You're about to do something here. The spirit's got your back. You're going to co-create. You're inviting spirit into this. So this is the thing. I want to call you out and be a little bit bossy pants. Lately. I'm just feeling that in your energy. And I don't think it's wrong because I'm Aries. I can be a little bit bossy pants. I can be right there with you. So there's like, and I feel like when you're like that, it's because you have a drive and like your deeper soul is telling you. I like to think that fire signs, like when their intuition is speaking to them, it's almost like burning through the core of their body and they just know what they need to do and they need to ignite it and go with it. And this is it. Like, I feel that. I don't know if it's because we're in your season. You all are approaching the lion's gate or what's going on. But, um, like, and it's showing up here. And I'm just saying that, like, you've kind of been coming through in some of the other re readings. I had, Last week you did that to someone. Was it Virgo? I don't remember. And then, like, you just did it to Cancer. <laughs> All over their reading. And here, like, I just see your direction. You know exactly where to go. Look at, they're all looking in the same direction. Into the future. It's like you're planning something to be at home. <laughs> Wombat spirit. I don't think that's what you're planning, though. I think maybe you are now at home. But it's almost like you're sitting at home and you're planning something. You're playful. You are giving yourself time to play. To find that little kitten inside leo that little cub to come out is playful tending to the small things you might have been playing with kids i don't know maybe you've got like uh your own kids grandkids nieces nephews it just feels like that or maybe some of you feel like you have a new puppy or kitten in the house kind of a funny message to get but there's something small that you need to tend to and you're kind of being playful in how you do it. But you are like, it is still taking you in the direction that you want to go here. Like not even that can distract you. So it's almost like even like the small responsibilities that you have to look after throughout your day-to-day -day life. You're still looking after that, but it's it, the, it, the intent that you put in everything right now is over here. It's taking you here and you know the spirit's got your back. You're inviting spirit to create this with you let's go and see what we make but right now i feel like you're just kind of you know it's not as as you are not or your experience is not as big and, and as expansive as you know it's going to be in the future but that seems okay like honest to goodness at least it seems like that to me because you're being playful here but you're getting getting the things that you kind of are responsible for getting done done and then co-creating with the spirit in the future I'm going to pull out, actually, an oracle card for each one of these oracle cards. You kind of get me like an energetic feel of these descriptions. And this mouse, I'm going to tell you too from my own uh, biology at, in college where, okay, so small like be pretty much babies of anything they have their heads are bigger than their bodies their ears can be disproportionate there's a disproportionate um element to this mouse it's not a full-grown mouse i can identify that through what i've learned 
So that's how I'm getting to, like, it does say the small things. You think, well, they could just little things in nature. I feel like it's things that are kind of like vulnerable, not quite developed. It could be something in you, even vulnerable, not quite developed, ready to go out soon, ready to hatch out soon. Um, but it's the delicate little things in life that, you know, at any given time, all of us have a responsibility to kind of look out for because when we're in that state, something was looking out for us and protecting us. With the sandpiper, the playfulness. I oh, this was sick. You have the bear. Wow, yeah. Like that's a very um, like parental kind of energy. Mouse spirit. You have the dolphin. Oh, karmically healing. I think it's healing for you to do this, whatever you're doing. When I say whatever that is, I just, I'm really getting the feeling like playing with kids. Like playing with some kids. Maybe, you know, maybe just going out in the neighborhood and playing with, See, I don't know, maybe they got some, uh, what do they call that? Like street hockey or something going on. Like, I can go and play with them. Because it's healing. This is healing for you. Tending to the small things is very healing. Kind of like healing the inner child within you too. But it feels like almost like looking after just like little last minute things before you go on a big trip. So looking after little last minute things within you even possibly. Um, I think whether you are actually playing with kids or not, or just, you know, looking after kids or, you know, it's a summer too, so there could be a lot of grandparents that are looking after um, spending more time with the kids than they typically would. So you are very responsible here in your playfulness. Your healing is so beautiful and healing, it's not even funny. And it is tending to the small things. It's just, I'm picturing someone who's going, because then you've got this co-create with spirit. Which is, I feel like, in the not-so-distant future. And it's almost like a trip. So you're preparing for the trip. You've done all the big stuff. You've packed the suitcases. You've contacted the newspaper delivery. If <laughs> you can still get that, I don't know. Um, the milkman. <laughs> I could really date myself. But, you know, like all the big things. The car is loaded. You're ready to go. But... You always got to walk through the house, make sure all the windows, if you've got lights that are on timers, make sure that those are working. You turn the timer on. Did, did, did everybody go pee? Make sure, I've learned to make sure every toilet is flushed because my son is not flushing toilets all the time now. So you don't want to be gone for a week and somebody's peed in the toilet. And I'm, I'm just telling you, <laughs> that's my new tending to the little things. Making sure every toilet is flushed. <laughs> the door so that it's like you're just about ready <laughs> to go out the door but there's these, these little things here i'll turn the temperature down a bit or up depending on if it's air conditioning or heating the back door is locked yeah the back door is locked it's literally it feels like energetically like that so co-create what is this what is oh gosh darn it look at this the oh no you and something are coming together here and it's very high vibrational. Maybe it's spirit, but what is this? This is the first time in this whole reading so far that anything beyond you has shown up. And anything that you're interacting with is just a little stuff I'm dealing with right now. There's a lot of strong Leo energy in this. And I'm saying, I'm just saying because this card I placed it and it's look, it's going this way. But to me, it's almost like meeting you here head on. They're both bird energies, but there's different birds. Very high vibrational, the hummingbird. High frequency. This, oh, check this shit out. You got the swan. You got the swan at the bottom, reflective energy. I kind of feel like that because you're both birds showing up here at the end of this part of the reading. And you feel very, I want to say, like it's very high vibrational. You're just, you're like, you're not showing that up in one card. Like this is just kind of saying all that in one card. We're here, I mean, you're playful, yet you're responsible. That's really good. I mean, it's really grounded. It's the bear. 
it's a bear and it does to me like just i get that like mom bear papa bear kind of energy and then tending to the small things high vibrational healing you know maybe too if you're looking after grandkids or your own kids somebody's kids i don't know going out and having a good time with them and the kids really need this right now because they've had a really rough go with the pandemic it's been kind of fun taking my son out with his friends um and like uh, back in April, we went to see one. No, no, it would have been. No, not April, because that's when everything shut down here. Oh, when was it? I'm sorry, because I know it's all about you. And May? You got to bear with me. As I get older, my stories, they deviate. I'm going to come back. I think it was May, or beginning of June. Him and his, like, one of his best friends went, walked down to their house. And he's hiding behind a pillar and his friend wouldn't come out the door. <laughs> they were so shy with each other. And I was talking to his, his mom, who's my best friend. I was saying, isn't this funny? Like they've been talking to each other on like, um, like the internet, but now they're face to face and they're, but now they're just like, so just they're kids again. And it's just fascinating to see how quickly they can recover from stuff. They're like, like it never happened within just a couple weeks. But I see, like, I see, like, goodness here. I see, like, a real nice goodness in this energy. So I want to push these up because I need to pull tarot about this. But it feels like the story really begins at the co-creation point with the crow and the hummingbird. And I feel like that's what I'm going to do. Because this, it's because everything that you're doing is, I don't want to say it's just biding your time. It kind of is, but you're really making awesome use of your time as you're biding it can you be can you bite it <laughs> if you know what i'm saying you know what i mean jelly bean <laughs> yeah you're biding your time for this point these are both individual energies i'm going to give them that respect and give them their own cards you're big you're big in this so the crow is a lot bigger than the hummingbird I just, I don't know, it could be like in physical stature. It could be in, um, what is the word I'm looking for? It could be, um, it could be in your physical stature. You're much bigger than the hummingbird energy over here. Or it could be also in um, like a status on some level. I don't know. So let me see here. One, two, three. Oh man, you got to clear something up here. You got the two of pentacles, the seven of cups, and the three of swords. Yeah, there's something that needs to be cleared up here for you. The hummingbird has got the eight of swords, the two of swords, and the daughter of swords. Oh, my God. I never saw two people so in their heads in different ways. Seven of wands is at the bottom. It's almost like a breakthrough energy. Like coming through the defenses, opening up the light, creating a eureka moment. Oh my goodness. Co-create with spirit here. Two of pentacles, seven of cups, and three of swords. You are. You have been tending to the small things, that's for sure, with the two of pentacles. But it's almost as if like having a moment of rebirth here. I really get it with this card. Like you're the full on butterfly, but you can't move forward because you've got stuff that you're supposed to look after that you kind of have to look after. You got to do these little things. Mm. <laughs> it's like you're, you've, you're in the car, the car is loaded, you've checked everything, but you can't find the garage door opener. <laughs> so now you can't go. Like shit, I can't get out of the garage. There's something of that, like you can't move forward. So it leaves you feeling kind of confused. Like, well, what really is the point here? Come on, I'm gonna miss my flight. And I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna get stuck in the traffic. Because definitely you have been held back from what you really want to do with your, um, your healing, your groundedness. You're being responsible. It's almost like you know, you stepped up to the table to do everything that you've needed to do here. So why am I being held back, universe? What's going on? 
And not only are you being held back, and it's really, honestly, it's causing just like an emotional confusion and heartbreak. It's just got you in your head and thinking, okay, my heart feels one way about this and my mind is telling me something else. Like, what the hell is the truth here with these two cards? Weighing out these possibilities, being stuck. Yeah, you're really ready to come out. Look at, okay, you're dealing with someone in the future to co-create with who is, and I'm getting it again, like with this mirroring energy. And again, look at both both birds, or both birds, well, both birds, but now also both butterflies. Um, you've hatched out, but you can't move forward. This one can't hatch out because it's not safe. You see how that's kind of mirroring, but in different situations that people will have in their life? So this one can hatch out because it's not the right time. I don't know if there's an eclipse or something that's coming up in the near future somewhere around the world, but I'm really being drawn to the symbol of the eclipse between these two swords. Some sort of a crossroads here, and it's almost like energetic. Some sort of energetic resolution is what solves this. And with the Daughter of Swords, it's like the Page of Swords, so sort of being on standby, and you can't do much else except watch and wait and try to learn and see if there's a signal or a sign from the universe about what you should do. What you should do because you, you don't have any possibilities to do anything. This is really two high vibrational energies that have either as yourself have hatched out, you've done the work, you've done the healing, but you're being held back and it's left you in a lot of confusion here. And then this is an, an energy, it's almost like both of you are kind of meant to collide together, but then they're completely held back and it's leaving them in indecision and thinking, well, at this point, I can only really go on what the universe shows me because I'm not, I can't move forward. I have no options here to move forward in any way. This energy can't move forward. And if I, I want to say, if this, this energy wants to move towards you, I really feel like that. This energy wants to move towards you, but it just keeps feeling like you, it gets, it keeps being moved away from you because looking at the Daughter of Swords, I, all these swords are holding back, holding back. And this sword, you can't go forward or backwards. But the Daughter of Swords, her sword is pointing this way. It's almost like, well, the universe keeps telling me to go this way. But what I really want to do is to go this way. But at this point, it's out of their hands. It just feels like there's this person. I don't know. Like maybe, I don't know if you've even met this person. It's kind of weird. Like I don't want to talk about this. They want to come towards you. So maybe you have met this person. Or they just have a sense that they're supposed to go in a certain direction to meet someone or to experience something. To come across uh, something on the path. But, well, God, my intuition, everything is telling me that the path is this way. But I keep getting moved in this direction. And I literally, like, if you do know this person, it's almost like they have no way of moving towards you, no way of contacting you, no way of communicating, nothing. And, I don't know, maybe your telephone has been... The wire's been cut. <laughs> You're like, you can't do anything about it either. This is really frustrating. But you really know what you want. I came into this reading feeling it. And all your cards are going this way. Maybe that's the problem. You know exactly which direction you're supposed to go into. I feel like this person's being shown that too, but they don't understand it. Like maybe if there's two energies... And both of these energies feel like they're supposed to meet at a given point. And, and maybe the point is something like that, okay? Like kind of like a circle and you're both down at this end and you've got to go around the diameter, the radius to get up here. And you realize, okay, the meeting point is up here. we got to go this way. And this was thinking, well, actually, well, I'm being pushed this way, but you're back here. Like, how do I go back here? Well, you can't go back. you got to go forward. That's what that feels like. But they don't get that. They didn't get the map or they didn't get the message about it. They didn't get the notice. Their GPS. How? Oh, that's what it is. It's like their GPS is telling them where you are. Oh, I can't get there. 
but their GPS is not telling them where you're going to be and where they're going to be, if that makes any sense. They are actually being guided to go in the same direction that you're trying to go into. So even if this isn't someone that you, if this is someone you've never met before, they're on the path to meet you. They're being guided. Spirit's working pretty damn hard to get this person to go in that direction. But for some reason, it's almost like maybe they sense you. Your energy is pretty strong. I'd say your energy is coming off real strong lately. So that could be throwing people off too that are meant to find you sort of in a destined way, like new soulmate contracts that you're supposed to open up with people as you move forward and um, meet new experience and individuals. But your energy is here now, and that's kind of what they're drawn to, not realizing that your energy is going to end up here, and so they need to follow the path to get where you are. I kind of got exa exhausted just describing that. Yours is heavy. Theirs is confused. Almost like confused and frightened. I mean, this Eight of Swords is like, you can't go anywhere. Don't even try it. You're going to get sliced up. The Three of Swords. You've got the Three of Swords. The Hierophant on the Two of Pentacles. I'm asking about the Three of Swords, and this just flew under the Two of Pentacles. So the Two of Pentacles is connected to your Three of Swords. The responsibilities that you have here, they're very healing. They're very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are good things that you do, but they do hold you back from what it is that you would like to move forward in. And it causes a conflict between your mind and your heart. Your mind is telling you, well, the logical thing is, but your heart is saying, come on, listen to me. You know what you feel. Yeah, right? Come on, like it's that going on there. So with the Hierophant and the Knight of Swords, this is like wanting to really charge in and make something really known. Either make something really known, cut something out that has to do with responsibilities. Because the Hierophant can have something to do, well, not can, it pretty much does, have like the responsibility that we have to others in this lifetime. And that can be through our work, that can be through our families, that can be through commitments that we've made. You've made some sort of commitment here, whether you've done that um, on a spiritual level with family or friends, you know you've got some sort of commitment here, or if that is literally through, like it could be the work that you do or something like that. There's, you would just love to charge through and change this. But, okay. The Three of Swords, I'm gonna try again, here we go. The Five of Wands and the Ace of Wands, like there it is, it's like you feel, you feel passion, you feel desire, you feel excitement, but it's conflictive, you're not supposed to. I do see you though, because your energy is strong and the ace came in after the five. So it does feel like, you know, and the five of wands is Leo and, oh, what is it? I can't remember now. Is it Saturn? What is the five? I oh, know it's, excuse me, turn on. It's trying harder. It's making things better. Where is it? Come on, don't wait at the end. Bear with me. I see people who are really good at astrology yelling. It is Saturn and Leo striving to improve. Improve a situation. Improve a dynamic. Improve the future. And here you have the ace. Like you've got it ready to go. I really feel like you are ready to go. I'm not going to even focus on your energy anymore. <laughs> You're ready to go. But what is going on over here? This person cannot go. They can't go forwards or backwards right now. Spirit is about to lead them forward. They can't. The Eight of Swords. The High Priestess. Oh, they are being hidden. They are being hidden and things are being hidden from them. The High Priestess and the Five of Cups. Disappointment here. They're working through emotional disappointment. Things that have failed, they're literally being kept in a holding pattern with the high priestess. And it's like totally unknown. It's like the plane keeps circling and the pilot's not coming on to tell you what the hell's going on. 
just circling and sort like I don't know is there a bomb threat downstairs <laughs> is there a bomb threat on the plane I don't know we're just that's it it's a holding pattern and that's all the information that the, I feel like the holding pattern in itself feels like a big disappointment to this person the two of swords with this eclipse I'm really curious to look at when eclipses are coming up because it feels like there's something in that here the knight of cups and the ace of cups wow that's a big eclipse that's a big shift there's a big huge energetic emotional shift here moving forward emotionally going from a point of massive disappointment to like massive growth in the emotional department a brand new beginning maybe this is why this person is being held back I really feel like for some of you, it could be someone you've never met before. And your paths are about to cross, but this person has definitely been held back. And well, you both have, but in di really different ways. The daughter of swords. The daughter of swords. Oh, that was sneaky. God, look out. This, yeah, this person can't move. Holy crap. <sighs> the two of swords and the devil. This person has no ability to move. <laughs> Nothing. There is no way this person, this person, it feels really toxic to them even. Even though they're in a really high vibrational state. And like you, like you're healed, you're hatched, you're ready to go, but <clears throat> nope. <laughs> Sorry. Like what the hell gives spirit? That's what I would almost call this. What the hell gives spirit? So what is the sign? What is the sign or synchronicity or symbol that gets this person moving in the chariot? <laughs> gets this person moving in the right direction. The chariot. So when movement is available, movement will happen. That's about, this is like, talk about, this is like spirit having maybe two people by the short and curlies even. <laughs> like you can't, you can't move in the direction that you would like to, or at least that you feel like you're supposed to move into. Be at home. That's what I feel like like you are now. Like, well, I can't <laughs> do what I want to do. I can't move the way I want to move. What is the indication for you for movement? The Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles and the Hermit. So, I don't know. Maybe, Leo, you do know this person. Because this is, with the hermit, it's just kind of telling to me like some sort of distance in something. This is really like, I don't know, this is the mother, this is the wife, this is the... You couldn't get much more grounded, nurturing, or loving out of that. It feels like to me, either... Something that you're anticipating suddenly becomes available that you have not had access to. Or you will just suddenly, I mean, the energy and circumstances have changed around you and you find yourself on a path that is just, there are no obstacles, there are no confusion, there's no confusion. There is um, nothing but like, uh, love and nurturing and stability and growth and abundance and beauty and creativity those are really two like really beautiful energies to come out with how you will know to move forward your deeper self will know you'll feel something you know i think you'll be listening to, in this three of swords you'll really be listening to the heart element here the eight of cups the, the eight of cups that's how i would describe this with the page of cups oh there's really some sort of distance here, whether it's like a destiny that um, you have yet to walk the path towards, vice versa for this other energy outside of you, or someone or something that you've experienced or know. It doesn't come through really as strongly as um, someone that you've yet to meet, but I could be wrong. 
there's definitely a mirror going on, but there's distance here. And the small new beginning after that. Really interesting. So there we go. That's it, my dear pussycats. I'm going to go do the extended. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.